praise Jesus, praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, praise the Almighty God. I'm from the Rock Intercessor Ministries. I'm here today to preach to you the word of Jesus Christ, hoping that some of you give your life to God today, amen? Now, today's message for you, my dear friends, is think of heaven. I don't know about you, this world is not my place. I want you today to think with me about heaven, you see? And we ought to do what to think about heaven because why this world is not our place. So today, I want you to go with me in a talk guide at the place the Bible calls heaven. I want you to think about heaven with me today. And our talk guide was the angel of God that was leading John through the revelations. And revelation today is a revelation chapter 21, verse 9 to 10. And there came one of the seven angels who have seven bows full of the seven plagues, and spoke to me, that is John, saying, Come, and I will show you the bride and the wife of the Lamb. And he carried him away in the spirit to the great and a high mountain, and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. So here is a guide to the John. He's guiding me and you today. Amen. I, I want you today to follow me in Jesus' journey, see? And then the Bible said that the angel guided him, and then showed him the new heaven, that coming from above. So that means God has already prepared a place, my dear friends, for me and for you today. You see, some of you today, you will say, it is like a pie in the sky. Let me tell you something. I like pies. I will eat that pie. And I'm waiting for the dessert. Because the dessert is where it's in heaven, you see. Some of you will say, we Christians, we are earthly, useless, and heavenly minded. So it shall be. That's what the word of God says, you see. We ought to do what I suggest to you that the opposite is true, you see, because many of us are earthly minded and then we are no good to heaven on earth. And then the Bible says this in Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. It says, If you have been risen with Christ, seek the thing that is above where Christ is and seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the thing that is above and not on the things that is on the earth. And where, where your mind is, that's where your heart will be. So we ought to do what? To be heavenly minded. Just Christ tell us this in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 20 to 21. He said, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where teeth do not break in and steal. Now listen to this. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So, if your heart is not in heaven, your heart is where this earth is. And the Bible said that everything that is in this earth is going to pass away. And we ought to do what? To set our minds on the thing that is above. And by the way, if you want to find out how rich you are, you need to ask yourself, is there anything that you have in this life, when you die, can you take it with you? Of course not. And that is why just why I say, put your minds on the thing that is above. Because where your mind is, is where your treasure will be. You see, the book of Revelation is quite interesting, isn't it? It's full, of, it's full of syllables, it's full of prophecies and other things which our woman mind can never comprehend. But thank God for putting in all this into, uh, into symbols, you see? So, for example, if you, want to discuss, if you want to tell a child about a nuclear physics, you have to do what? Use analogies, use what? In, in illustrations, you see? And perhaps, in a way, that a child will understand. We are all children in the eyes of God. And friend, today, I'm talking to you today about heaven. There's a way to heaven. But we cannot make our way to heaven if we do not accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and personal Savior. I want to also show you today the geography of our heaven. Amen. I want you to also to learn that heaven is not like a material place. It is a real place. Amen. It is a real place. P-L-A-C-E. It is a real place, you see. I said it, you see. Because this is what John says in the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 and 2. He said, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, and pre prepare a bride had done for her husband. So John is saying, He's saying that he saw a new heaven and a new earth. And it corresponded to the heaven and the earth that you and I see today. Heaven is a real place, my dear friends, you see. What just Christ said in the book of John 14, verse 3. He said, if I go, I prepare what for you? A place for you. A place for you. 
He didn't say, I go and prepare a statement or a state of mind. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. So now I want you to think about this. Because when we are going to do what? Have a resurrected bodies. When we die, the Bible says our body is going to be resurrected. Now, if your body is going to be resurrected, come out from the grave, you need a place to do what? To stay. And that's why Jesus Christ said, He go ahead of us to do what? To prepare a place for me and for you today. And we also know that when Jesus Christ rose from death, he also do what? When I also with his body to heaven. And that's where he's sitting now. Interceding for me and for you, my dear friends, you see. So today, you listen to what the Bible also says about this reality in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 9 to 10. Speaking about Abraham here, he said by, the, by faith, he went to live in a land of promise as a foreign land living in tent with isaac and jacob and heirs with him of the same promise so that is abraham never built anything never built a house never built anything with stone or bricks or mortar the bible says he lives in tent the bible tells us why now he said for he was looking for a city that has a foundation whose designer and builder is god so my dear friend here today i'm looking for that city i don't know about you this world is not my place I'm looking for the city. The Bible said, the builder and the designer is God. And the Bible called that place heaven. Abraham was looking forward to it. Isaac was looking forward to it. Jacob was looking forward to it. All the things that passed in the, in, 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 the, in the ages, they were looking forward to it. We today, we ought to do what? To look forward to it. This world is not your place. Don't feel so last in this world. Don't make this world as your place. Because when you die, there's another place. Now the question here is this. When you open your eyes, if you don't give a light to Jesus Christ, the Bible called the place is going to end up second death, which is the lake of fire. I don't wish that for you. You have a choice to make today, my dear friends, you see? Because the Bible said that God preparing a place for me and for you. And where he is, he wants me and you to be there. Now, you listen to what Paul says, because Paul was still in the ministry when he took this journey to heaven. He took a trip to what? To heaven. Not to Jamaica, he took a trip to where? To heaven. He said, while he's staying in his ministry, listen to what he describes in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 to 3. He said, I know a man in Christ. Now he's speaking about himself in a, in a, in a, in a third person. And he said, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in the third heaven. Now listen to this phrase. Whether in body or out of body, I do not know. Paul said, I do not know when this happened to me. Whether I was in body, out of body, I don't know. But he said, God knows. I, so I know that this man was caught up, up in the paradise. Whether in the body, out of body, I don't know. God knows. So what Paul is saying here is this, my dear friends. Paul said that I was caught up in the third heaven. Whether I was in body or I was in spirit, I don't know. So what this tells me and you today is this. That you can be in heaven today in spirit. You can be in heaven today in body. Amen. Elijah went there with his body. He didn't die. Amen. Apostle Paul said that he was there in the spirit. The Bible says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You see, when Jesus Christ died, what happened to his body when he came out from the grave? What happened? People saw him. He t- they touched him. Thomas was, was that thing. He let her touch him. And he believed, he believed by touching him. He ate fish with his disciples. And now, where did he go? He went to a place. And what is that place? Heaven is real. That's where Jesus Christ is today. All the marks Jesus Christ received in this world, both the nails to his to this feet, to his hand on the side, is still having it today. Is there in heaven? You see? Let's listen, my dear friends. I don't want you to feel too the last in this world. I don't know what you are looking for in this life, but let me tell you something. You're gonna be so disappointed when you die, you don't give a life to Jesus Christ. And then it is too late for you. As you are living today. The word of God is for those who are living, not for the dead. We don't pray for the dead because they are dead. There's no medicine after death. Do you know that? Now that you are living today, I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want you to know him before you meet him, my dear friends, you see. So I continue telling you this because the second Peter tells us this, you see. He's telling us about the thing that he's going to do. We're born of Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 13. He said, but the day of the Lord is coming like a thief. And the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be born up and dissolved, and the earth and the world that has been done in them will be exposed. Since are the things are all to do or to dissolve, now watch this. He said, What sort of people ought you to be in living in holiness and what? 
in godliness, waiting for the hesitating the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the heaven will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly body will be melted and be burned. But according to the promise, we are waiting for the new heavens and the new earth in which righteousness dwell. Hallelujah. That's what I'm waiting. That's why today I want you to think about heaven. Think about heaven with me, my dear friends. You see? Don't think about this life. There's nothing in this life. When you die, everything that you have will go back to recycle. Your body will go back to recycle. Your money, your cars, everything that you have will go back, you see? So we ought to do what? To look forward to the things that is where in heaven. Let me tell you something. The Bible said that the heaven and the earth is going to be melted and dissolved. And through that, God is going to create a new heaven and new earth. Just look at the cars that, all these cars that are driving. They must have squished the old parts, the frames, the metal in. That's why they have all this look at all the whole metal, all the whole things, all the whole rod, all the whole frames. That's why if you go to the scrappy place, they squeeze them, they squeeze them so tight, and then they made them, they use them to do what? To beat another car. The same way your, your cloth is wearing is full of fire, the boss can catch fire, the house can catch fire, your body can catch fire, everything gonna be dissolved. That's what God said, that's not me. The Bible says everything I have in this life is going to be dissolved. And through that, God is going to create what? A new heaven and a new earth. What a mighty God that you are serving. You see, God doesn't waste things. You see, your body, when you die, God is going to recycle you back to, to the dust. The Bible says it came from dust. It will come back to dust, my dear friends. You see? So today, the Bible wants you to do what? Before this happens, you need to give your life to Jesus Christ today, not tomorrow, my dear friends. You see, because Apostle Paul speaks to the church in Corinthians, also to me and you today. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, he said, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creature, the old things have passed away, and behold, the new has come. So here he says that if a man is in Christ, he is a new creature. So that means the old that is in me is gone. I'm a new person. I'm a brand new man. You see? And that's why the Bible says that the old man that is in you, what happened to him? Did he disappear? No, he didn't have a better to say, You've been transformed. You've been transformed, my dear friends, and you've been transformed by the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. The old world, the old heaven, is going to be punched with fire. And it's going to do what? Become new heavens and a new earth, right? You see? And now, as I'm talking about taking you through this tour of heaven, I want you to pay attention, you see, because as we are living, as you say, a place, for example, you are living in the city of London, this is a place, isn't it? You can say this place is beautiful. Yes, it is. You can also say this place is wicked. Yes, also it is. Then the Bible says that the old heaven and earth, which is wicked, is going to be wiped away with a fire. And then God is going to build a new heaven and a new earth. I want you to think to, with me because the Bible said that this was translated to Apostle Paul by an angel. And he said that, see what the Bible says. It says the bride and the wife of the Lamb. What is talking about? We are all spiritually married to Jesus Christ. Amen. The church is married to Jesus Christ. We are the bride to God, to Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. I want you to get this wisdom today, you see. And then again, he's talking about the city. So that means that the city that God has prepared for those who love him today. And I know those who are going to be in that city. I know all the hope little children have been aborted. They're going to be in that city. Amen. I know those who will not be there. Those who will not be there, those who didn't get alive to God, they will never be there. And the word of God is talking to you today, my dear friends, you see. I want you today to give your life to Jesus Christ, you see. Then again, the second thing I want you also to say, Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. He said, I had, a, I, had a, I had a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of the place of God is with man. So we know that in the Old Testament, the, 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 the dwelling place was the tabernacle, where the priest goes to the holy of the holy place. It's only him is allowed to be there. The Bible says now God is coming down and we're going to stay with him. I don't have to pray anymore our father in heaven because i'm already with him and that's why today i want you to to, to do what to give your life to jesus christ you see because not only that he said going to wipe away our tears from our eyes the death will not be no more neither there will be money nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away and he had he who seated on the throne said behold i am making all things known and also he said write this down for these are the words are trustworthy and true so he says to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Just as me and you today will say A to Z. Just, just quite say he is the beginning to the end. Amen. 
And then he said to those who are thirsty, I will give them spring of water of life without payment. And the one who conquers will have a heritage. And he will, I will be his God and he will be my son. So here comes the warning for those who can make it. Listen, if this is your lifestyle today, I want you to repent. You see, he said, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the testable, as for the murderers, the social immoral, the sonjurers, the adulterers, and the liars, their portion will be the lake that burns with fire and suffer, which is the second death. So let me tell you today, your first death, when you die, your body goes back to the ground. And then your soul is the one God is going to judge. And Bible has warned me, and you the soul that sin will surely die. Amen? So you need, to, you need to understand this, you see, because you can say, a preacher, why are you telling me that God is going to send fire and they will bring stone? Listen, man, that's not my word. That's the word of Jesus Christ. I'm just a Western Union boy. Send you the message, you see, because heaven is a majestic place. Do you know why? Because the king is a majestic, it's a dwelling place for God, and God will never let anything fit to enter it. That's why he says, those who are going to be there, he's going to wipe away all their tears. He said, he's going to wipe away all their tears, and there will be no more death. Neither there will be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Listen, my dear friends, I don't know about you, I'm looking forward to heaven. Hallelujah. You see? And I know where my, my, my both parents, I know where they are. When they die, I share tears. I can't share tears anymore because you know why? I know where they are. And that's why I'm telling you today. If you walk with God, He can never let you out. Amen? He will do what put in that camp. And that's why today I want you to, to, to give your life to Jesus Christ, you see? And then again, friends, He also says that there will be no more crying. Amen? He will turn your, he will turn your Calvary to, to Easter. He will turn away your tears to to joy. There will be no more tears. There will be no more sighing. There will be no more crying. There will be no more dying. There will be no more funerals. There will be no more death. There will be no more disease. No more coronavirus. All these things are gone. Are you not looking forward to that kind of place? No sickness. No crying. No sorrow. No weeping. No mourning. No miserable. No anxiety. No frustration. Heaven is a place for me and for you. God said he go and prepare that place for those who love him. Do you love God? You will be there. If you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, my dear friends, you will be so disappointed. It's going to be so too bad for you. When, you. when you open your eyes, you're going to see where you are. And that's why the word of God is warning you today, my dear friends, to do what? To give your life to Jesus Christ. You see? Because the Bible says, if this is your condition, cowardly, faithless, faithless, so that means if you don't believe in God, if you are not believing, you are faithless. You know that. If you don't believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, you are faithless. The Bible says you will not enter into the kingdom of God. So why do we have sickness today in the United Kingdom or in the world? It's because of what sin. If there's no sin, no sorrow. But yes, sin, yes, sorrow. And yes, sin, yes, death. So sin is the biggest problem we have here today. Do you know that? Sin is our biggest problem we have here today. Now you listen to what the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse 8. Condition of those who refuse to give life to God, he said, But for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, and the murderers, the sexual immorals, the strangers, the adulterers, the liars, their portion will be the lay that burns with fire and suffer, which is the second death. You see, and if you also look into the verse 27, he said, God is speaking about the new city, his partition to this. He said, Nothing unclean will enter there, not anyone who does deceptible or false but those who their names are written in the last book of life. So, friend, here today, the earth is corrupted. Do you know why? Because of sin. This earth is corrupted. That's why God is going to dissolve it. That's why God is going to destroy this world, because of what? Sin. So, every time you see sorrow, and you see someone tears, and you see heartbreak, sickness, and pain, behind it, ultimately, is what? It's sin. Amen? It's sin, you see? So sin brings what? Behind sin is what? Sickness. Behind sin is what? Sorrow. Behind sin is what? Pain. Behind sin is what? Suffering. Behind sin is also what? Death. And God says in heaven, none of these things will be in His presence. All these things will wipe away. All these things will be will gone. Why? Because the king rules what? In majesty. So now I want you to see, not only about the geography of the heaven, which I taught to you, I want you also to see today the government of heaven. I want you to see, my dear friend, you see, the glory of heaven. The glory of heaven. Friend, I wish 
how more time i wish i had more time to take you to this tour but listen to what the revelation 21 verse 9 says then came out one of the seven angels who have the seven boards of the seven last plagues and speak to me saying come and i will show you the bride the wife of the bride of the lamb and he carried me away in the spirit to the great and high mountain and show me the holy city jerusalem uh, by the way this is this is this is the capital of the new heaven I mean, that's Jerusalem. He said the Holy City Jerusalem coming out from, from, from heaven, from God, having the glory of God. Jesus said that having what the glory of God, his radiance is like the most rare jewel, like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall, 12 gates, and the gate, the 12 gates, and the 12 gates of angels. And the gate on the names of the of the twelve tribes of the sons of Israel were inscribed on the east gate and on the north gate, on the south gate, and on the west gate. So all the whole four corners are covered with, with gate. And the wall of the city have twelve foundations, and on them were the twelve names of the tribes of apostles of the Lamb. And one who speak to me had a measuring rod of a of a gold measure. Measure the city and the gates and the wall. The city lies four, four square. So that means everywhere you turn, there's a wall. Everywhere you turn, there's a wall. I say how four. I say how four. I say how four things in this world. You have the north and the south. You have the east and the west. In all these things, it's been covered. God is not missing anything out. He said the city lies in four square. Its length is measured as the width, and he measured the city with, with his rod, twelve thousand furlongs. It is length and the weight and the height are equal. Everything is in equal measure. He also it measures the wall, 444 cubits by the human measurement, which is also an angel's measurement. And the wall was built with jasper. Uh, Why the city was a pure gold, like a clear uh, glass. The foundation of the wall of the city were adorned with every kind of jewel. The first was jasper, the second saffron, the third agate, the fourth emerald. The fifth ounce, the sixth camilla, the seventh shallot, the eighth bezel, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysopros, the eleventh jesting, and the twelfth anest. Verse 21. And the twelve gates were the twelve pearls, and each of the gates of a single pair, and the street of the city was pure gold, like a transparent glass. This is the this is the situation in heaven, my dear friends. You see? So are you not glad to looking forward to that kind of city that God has prepared for those that love Him? So God has taken everything that we value in this life as we can, as, as the things that we love. He's showing us a simple that all, these are the things that you, if you are looking for it here, then you don't need to look for it, then look up. It's already been prepared for you and for me. So today, what about the source of the city? I want you to also to think about what the source of the city is in. That comes from God. In verse 9 and 10, he said that they already been prepared. So it means God has already been prepared a place for me and for you. So that our dead, resurrected bodies will be. That's where Jesus Christ also resurrected body is, you see. And then he said the first fruit is already there. So it is a place. Now the Bible called what? Heaven. And this is the source of the praise. Remember what just Christ said in the book of John 14, verse 3. I go to prepare a place for you. So where is that place being prepared right now, my dear friends? And the source of that city is one. It's coming down from heaven. It's coming from heaven. Amen. I want you also to notice the sight of the city that shines with the very glory of God. Don't get the idea that God, when you die, God don't look after you. The Bible says God has prepared a place for you. Where he is, that's where he wants you to be. This world is not your place. I am passing through. I'm on transit. I'm on transit in this life. I want you to be transiting in life because if you value this thing that is in the life, the Bible says you're mistaken. The Bible says, fix your eyes on the thing that is above, not on the thing that is below, you see? So I want you to see the sight of this city. I want you to notice the glory of God shining there. You don't need the moon. You don't need the sun. The glory of God will lighten everything, the walls and the gate. And also the the, the, the the breaking of the beauty of God. The Bible says the city has the word of Jasper. The city itself is city of God. Can you imagine the parent this city will be? God bless you, brother. And the glory of God, the colors of the Jewels. The Bible says it's going to be sky blue. This is the way God portrays what? Heaven. He said the God is so transparent, it's so pure that he can see through it. 
The Bible says the shaming of the wall of this city will be so strong, cannot be broken. You see, what? Why is it the wall is there? The wall is not. It's not there to keep us in. Of course not. I mean, the gates are open. By the way, if you want to know that the gates is open, the wall are there is to, not to keep the the wicked people out. No, the wicked people are surrounded in the hell, and the walls are there for the glory of God. Amen. That's why you're gonna have it's like a memorial place. You're gonna have the names of the uh, the, the tribes of Israelite. You're gonna have the foundation of the twelve apostles being written there in the wall. That's what the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation 21, verse 12 and 13. You see also the names of the tribes of the children of Israel, right? And then verse 14, you see the 12 of the apostles. What is this? God is trying to tell me that time is coming when the Jews and the Gentiles will be together. Amen? Will be together and glorify the name of God. Why? Because if you look into it, you see also there was a sound in the city. Why is there a sound? The Jew and the Gentile together making a song if you if you listen to the bible saying the book of Revelation 15 verse 13 it said that we sing the sons of moses which is the servant of god and the son of the lamb so today look around where you see jewish people they are blessed people you see the bible says on that day we're gonna be together and singing one song to moses and to the lamb which is the son of what redemption what a wonderful song to sing you see and then i want you to see the size of the city I'm talking about heaven my dear friends you see i want you to think about heaven today so i'm talking about the sound then i talk about the size of the city listen to what the bible says in revelation 12 15 and 16. he talks about this city it is a four square so the bible said that it's been measured with war with a rod and it is twelve thousand for long uh, do you know how far it is it's 1,500 miles. It's like going to Glasgow five times, going and coming back five times. That is how long this city is. Also, so it's 5,000 miles on one way, 5,000 miles up straight as well. So it is more than the atmosphere. It is atmosphere, you see, because this the tower goes up and up and up and up. up. You cannot, you cannot measure it, my dear friends. You see. So why did why did this why did this everything is in square? Remember the holy of the holies in the temple that I told you before? The holy of the holies temple, there the priest goes in there to do what? To worship God. And to do what? To pour the blood on the mercy seat. So here is the picture of this small uh, square uh, cubicle. Now our God is making it large beyond our imagination, you see? So the holy of the holy places, that was a replica that the priests have to do or to go and worship in the, in the tabernacle. Now go and enlarge it. It says 1,500 miles. In that direction, you look at, you look at the, the north, the south, and the east, and the west. It says, well, it's 1,500 miles. And then you look up, straight up. It's also 1,500 miles. So what God is telling me and you today, my dear friends, here is this. There's enough room. Amen. I don't know what you're fighting here. Are you a squatter? Don't worry. In this life, you're a squatter. Uh, when, when you die, you're going, to, you're going to heaven. You have a, you have a mansion. Hallelujah. I mean, if you have a small room in this life, don't worry. When you die, you have a bigger room in heaven. Whatever that you have, Queen is she's living in palace. If she don't give her life to God, when she dies, she, she, she can be there. Amen? So you can be a homeless person today. When you die today, give your life to Jesus Christ. You have a mansion in heaven. Amen. More than what the queen have here, more than what Prince Harry have here, more than what the winners have here, whatever thing they have here, everything ends here. And that's what I'm telling you here today. You can be poor in this life, but in heaven you are rich. You remember about the story about Lazarus and the rich and the, and, and, and the rich man? You see, you see, there's a contrast there. The same way today, the, the word of God is giving you a courage today to do what? To come to Jesus Christ today because why? Everything that you have here in this life will pass away. What about the, the, the sanctuary of the city? Think about this, you see. Revelation chapter 21, verse 22 to 23 says, John said that I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord Almighty and the Lamb. So that is the sanctuary. And the city had no need for what? Sun, nor moon, nor light to shine in, for the glory of God gives light, and it lights up warm. The Lamb, so glory of God is the light. Amen? You remember the Old Testament? The picture about the prophets of our Lord Jesus Christ at the gate, and Jesus Christ came. He said, Well, he said, I'm the door. Remember about the altar in the Old Testament? Jesus Christ came, well, he shed the blood for me and for you. Remember about the labor, they have to labor? Jesus Christ said, He cleans us with our words, with his word. 
You remember also about the table of the bread? Just Christ came, he said, well, I'm the bread of the life. You remember about the golden central of the old, test, uh, of the old te uh, temple? Just Christ came, he said, he's the light of the world. So the incense we are born there, but just Christ came, he said, he's the high priest. He is the temple. I'm telling you today, you don't need to anymore to pray when you're in heaven. All you need to do is worship and praise God. Hallelujah. When you're in this life today, you pray, you say, our Father in heaven, when you say God, so face to face, you don't have to make that prayer anymore. So my prayer for you today is to give your life to Jesus Christ. Because these are the conditions, there's a condition and test to this message. If you don't accept Jesus Christ today, you can never see heaven. You can never see that place the Bible called heaven. Jesus Christ said he went to do what? To prepare a place for me and for you and for those that love him. So as, I, as I'm bringing, about to bring this message to close, my dear friends, you see, I want you to see the holiness that is in heaven. Amen. The godliness that is in heaven, you see, because it's heaven is a place where God made so perfect and holy. The Bible says, unclean thing can never enter heaven. That's why if you have a sinful lifestyle today, you need to repent. Because if you don't repent in your sin, just Christ warned us in the book of Luke 13, verse 3. He said, You likewise do what perish in your sin. Perish means what? End up in a hellfire. The Bible says, For God so loved the world. Think about that. God loves you. He gave his son as a gift that whoever believes in him will not perish, but do what? Have eternal life, you see? So my message for you today is quite likely, my, my dear friend. Listen to this Revelation 21, verse 24 and to 7. He said, but it's light which we, 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 we walk in the, in the nations, and the kings on the earth will bring their glory into it, and the gate will never shut by the day, and there will be no night there. So that means in heaven there's no night you see, because people do stupid things in the night. The Bible says in heaven there's no night. Hallelujah. And it said the gate will never be shut by day. And then it says this. They will bring into the glory of God and the honor of the nations. But listen to this. Yeah, this warning. But nothing unclean will enter it. Not anyone who does a deceptible and false. Only those who their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. I pray today that your names have been written in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the Bible says, anything that is unclean will never go into heaven. Are you living an unclean life? The Bible says it can never enter there. So this is the word of God telling you today, my dear friends. You see? So today, I have a short story before I finish. I've got two minutes now to run up. So before I finish, I want you to listen to this heavenly story. See? Pay attention to this story, okay? So a man dreamed one time. And then he, he stood outside the gate of heaven and saw people try to get in. And one man came and knocked at the, at, at the gate. The voice within said, Who is it that seeks the entrance to the kingdom of heaven? What is the password? And the man said, I'm a humanitarian. He said again, What is the password? He said, The password, his password is charity. The voice within said, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you're not. Another man came and knocked at the gate of heaven, at the entrance, seeking to enter into the kingdom of God. What is the password? And the man said, I'm a moral man. What is the password into heaven? The man said, it is honesty. The voice which is said, depart from me, you walk out of iniquity. I never know you not. Another came and knocked at the door. Who is that that seeks the entrance to enter the kingdom of heaven? What is the password? He said, I'm a religious man. What is the password into the kingdom of God? He said, Russia, the voice within said, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never know you not. Finally, a man came and knocked at the gate of heaven. The voice within said, who is it that seek entrance into the kingdom of heaven? What is the password? And the man said, in my hand I bring no price except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ I claim. The voice within said, open the gate wide and let it in. For such are the kingdom of heaven. Now, let me tell you something in this message. You can never force your way into the kingdom of God. Not, not by your religious beliefs. Not by praying five times a day. Not by fasting. Not by giving charity. Not by good works. Not by good looks. He can never enter into the kingdom of God in all this things, you see. So today, if you don't have the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to repent and give your life to Jesus Christ, you see. Because not tr if you, are, you, you, you need to trust in Jesus Christ. Not trust in your, human, your, your, your charity works. Not trusting in your religion, not trusting in your church membership, not trusting in anything else that you have. Your, your money can never bribe your way into the kingdom of God. Amen. But trusting on the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shed his blood at the cross of Calvary. And the Bible said, through him, 
that you will have peace with God. And through him, his special blood will sanctify you and cleanse you and give you the access into that kingdom of God, my dear friends. You see, now I'm going to give you the gladness of the heaven. This is the last one I want you to see here. The gladness of heaven. Hallelujah. The gladness of heaven. Heaven is a meaningful place, my dear friends. Listen to it. Revelation 22, verse 1 to 5. And then the angel showed me the river of, of water of life, bright as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and through the middle of the city, through the middle of the street of the city, also on either side of the river, the tree of life was the 12 kinds of fruit. Just imagine about yearning fruit each month. If you like fruit, the Bible says, well, there's a 12 kinds of different fruits for you in heaven. Each month, different thing. What you try to say here is it can never lack anything. Amen? Just, it's just giving a symbol. It can never lack anything. Amen? And then it says, it says the leaves, uh, the, the, it says the leaves of the two we are, we are for the healing of nations. It's not saying that there are going to be sickness in heaven. Of course not. It's just giving you a symbol. Amen? No sickness, what? In, in, the, in the kingdom of God. No shaking in the kingdom of God, my dear friends, you see? And then, verse 3, it says, No longer will there be accused, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servant will worship Him. Don't get the idea that when you go to heaven, you're going to realize, you're going to be worshiping God. Heaven is not for a lazy place. Amen? Heaven is for those who are prepared to go there. You need to walk, prepare yourself here in this earth before you can do what go to heaven. If you don't prepare yourself here, heaven, heaven will not be a place for you. You're going to be so bored in heaven. You see? So heaven is for those who God have kept their place, those who have accepted Jesus Christ today. If you accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and personal Savior, heaven, God bless you, brother, heaven is a place for you. And that's why I'm preaching for you today. Think about heaven. Amen? Don't think about this life. There's nothing here. I don't know about you, but I see this place as nothing anymore. Amen. I got my mind made up. Amen. My mind is being set above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My mind is what set above. Everything that is below, it belongs to the devil. That's where he's going. Everything that's above belongs to God. And that's where my heart and my mind is, you see. And then verse 4 says this. You will see his face. That's the face of our God. And his name will be on your forehead. And night will, not, will be no more. And then no need for what light or lamp or, or sun. For the Lord God will be the light and he will reign forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, I want you to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that today, today will be a good day. Give your life to Jesus Christ because when you die without him, you cannot see God. Come, come here today and give your life to Jesus Christ. Remember, bless in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah.